In this video, we're going to talk about flow analytics. Flow analytics comes primarily in three parts. They are archive, analyze, and alarm. First, let's talk about archive. In Scrutinizer, navigate to the admin tab, over to settings, and data history. In here, you can see that you're setting up how long you want to save data for each interval. So what's happening here is I'm specifying how long to save hosts that are learned in the system, IP addresses in Scrutinizer. Every IP address, external IP address, is added to the index. So basically, you can search on any IP address, in this case, that has been seen on the network for 365 days. Pretty impressive, and it's an instant searching. The next one is how long we're going to save the raw flows, the one-minute intervals. And I'm going to set them, save them for 240 hours. Same with five-minute intervals. Now, the one-minute intervals get aggregated into the five-minute intervals. And the five-minute intervals get aggregated into the 30, which get aggregated into the two-hour, then 12-hour, one day, one week. Okay, so you get the picture. As they're aggregated, what happens is before we drop any data, we create a total table. That way we can always accurately show utilization on the interface over time. And then after we create that total table, so we have a conversation table and a total table, um, then what we do is we save in the conversations table the top 1,000 conversations. So we end up dropping a lot of the data uh, for those higher intervals. Again, you can always force it to the raw data to get really accurate information. But for the higher uh, intervals where we're showing long-term trend, trends and we want to see top talkers, top applications, this works really well. Top uh, 1,000 is the default, and you can increase that. And how long we're going to save alarms that haven't been addressed. So basically, after seven days, we're going to delete them. Down here, we have the uh, a calculator. And we're looking at the current hard drive uh, utilization pace that the system has learned and the uh, predicted on how long it's going to, uh, how much space, excuse me, that we're going to need to support all this. All right, that pretty much wraps up archive. So the next one we're going to talk about is analyze. One of the first things that we want to point out about analyze is the ability to constantly resolve IP addresses that are coming into the network. So we can check off that box right there. So as the flows are coming in, we're looking at the source and destination address and we're resolving it. Puts a little bit of overhead on the system, obviously, and on your DNS. The advantage is when we're looking to find hosts by a host name or when we're looking to set thresholds based on portions of a DNS name or exclude certain traffic based on DNS name, this allows us to do that. So this is a nice option in Flow Analytics. The next thing I want to point out is setting up thresholds and triggering alerts. So I already have a saved report set up, and I talk a lot about this in another video. What I've done is I've set up this saved report to monitor this particular interface, and I've excluded this IP address, and I've also excluded this particular uh, Microsoft application. Now, the reason why I did that is because I know that this server, let's say, only talks on certain ports and only with internal hosts. So some of our customers use Scrutinizer as a form of IDS to watch for traffic to um, certain types of servers or applications. And once they learn or have a baseline of how that application typically communicates, they set thresholds for excessive number of flows, excessive number of connections, or internal host is talking to it at any given time, or if they should only be talking these particular applications, otherwise trigger. Very simple to do once I've added all my filters and adding filters like what's this undefined stuff, I can just bring that over and say exclude that and then apply it. But I'm going to look at my threshold. I basically said if I see more than 85% of this notify, and again, you can watch my other video or I could just set that down to 1% or, or even come up to the gear menu, change this to bits, and then go into the filters and say, look, if I see even one bit, any traffic at all, notify me. And I could do it per row as well. 
Okay, and the last thing I want to point out is alarm. Let's talk about that. Click on the alarms tab and you can see I'm looking at the alarms based on policy. And the heat map shows us the most significant alarms that are getting violated the most by the most violators or uh, the volume of violations over time. So the number of unique hosts violating it or devices and the number of violations. So high and to the right is where we're looking a lot of times for the um, real problems. Now, how do I set up all these algorithms to make sure that they're working for my unique environment and I don't get too many false positives? So let's talk about that for a minute. First thing I want to do is come over here and go to Settings, Flow Analytics Configuration. So here you see all the different algorithms that we ship Scrutinizer with to try and uncover anomaly type of traffic on your network. So let's take breach attempt, for example. I can look at the current alarms for this algorithm if there are any. I can disable it if I don't like this particular algorithm. It's not working for me in my environment. It is sending syslogs and it's making entry in the alarms tab. It's only running against two routers that are sending flows. And I'm currently excluding three hosts that were causing false positives. There's your execution, the amount of time it's taking to run. This is really important. If you have algorithms that are taking, uh, you know, 100 seconds to run, let's say, you may want to scale back the number or uh, types of exporters it's running against. The, all of these algorithms want to finish within five minutes, or it'll skip a time that it runs. And it won't stop, but it'll just it takes longer to run. You may want to make sure you're optimizing the system. And I'm getting an alarm count over here that tells me how many times it's been violated. And I can click on that to view a trend. You can see that it's currently running against these two exporters. And I can easily add additional exporters by just dragging them over. This interface is intelligent in that it looks in the templates coming from these exporters. So if, it, if the algorithm needs uh, TCP flags, for example, exporters that aren't exporting uh, TCP flags, like firewalls, for example, will not show up in some of these views. It tells me the IP addresses that have been excluded from triggering on this particular algorithm. And uh, I can add more. And I can also exclude by subnet or uh, child group, and you can learn about that in one of my other videos. And of course, your settings where you're going to set a threshold for how many violations, for how many flows in a five-minute period to trigger that alarm. And the aggregate timeout basically says 60 minutes. So if the violation keeps happening within, two, within 60, uh, excuse me, 120 minutes, then it'll just all be part of the same alarm. But if a 120-minute window passes and then it triggers after that 120 minutes, it's going to be considered a new alarm. So I can modify that as well. The other thing to keep in mind that those algorithms aren't the only things that can create alarms. You also can use saved reports that I showed you earlier. And these are my saved reports, and they're also going to the Alarms tab as well. So if I go back to the Alarms tab, I don't have to look at the alarms by policy only. I can also look at those violations by violator. And you can see that uh, we classify unique hosts by the IP group that they belong to. And I can, I can classify uh, IP addresses by IP group. And um, I'll talk about that in another video. The username we get from Microsoft Active Directory. We can also get it from Forecast Counteract. In some cases, we've been able to get the data from uh, Cisco ICE. Uh, we tell you the number of violations, the events that have taken place, the threat index, every unique policy or algorithm that's violated by a host has a different weight. And then, so let's say it's 10 for uh, scanning the network. So if they've scanned the network three times, then their threat index would be 30. But then they do a breach attempt or a data leak, that's got a, a weight of 100. So just one violation is 100. So then we can set a, a threshold on a total threat index of, let's say, 1,000 or 1,500 so that you get notified. And you will see the threat index move up and down because remember we're aging out those events after seven days so you want to take action on that 
So I can, if I want to see the policies that this host has violated, I click right there and I can see the individual policies that the host has violated and it gives me a first and last time it's been violated as well. If you want to learn more about this, just go up here and click for the manual and you can learn a little bit more. That's it for Flow Analytic. If you want to learn more about Archive, Analyze, and Alarm, just give us a call here at Plixer and we'll be sure to help you out and make sure you get started. Thanks.